action. Hi, I'm Chase Bear, and I'm doing a presentation about The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. Have you ever looked at an artwork and thought, what is the deeper meaning behind this? Well, that question can be answered by the paintings in the High Renaissance period. Now, Leonardo da Vinci was the head artist of this period. He was very innovative. Not only was he an artist, he was an engineer, a scientist, an inventor, all kinds of things. And um, he made a lot of different paintings and frescoes, which is paint mixed with plaster to make murals. And um, other revolutionary artists made different techniques, such as Brunelleschi, he made a perspective technique for 2D art, and he also made a octagonal barrel dome for a famous church in Italy. And during this time, there were a lot of people that would commission for art. For example, the Medici family, they were a banking company, or a banking family in this time in Italy, and they would commission for a lot of artists to do different types of art. And Leonardo da Vinci was actually commissioned to make The Last Supper. And the, um, he was patroned by Ludovico Sforza. And it was to be made in Santa Maria del Grazi. And Leonardo da Vinci, in this painting, he used a lot of his figures to uh, convey the narrative with his stories in the paintings. And this can be clearly seen in The Last Supper. And the main figure that is greatly emphasized in this painting is Jesus Christ in the center. And Jesus is um, very much emphasized by the color and the perspective and replacement of the apostles and disciples around him. And so color was used in three ways. It is for near complementary colors. And the colors that are used for his garments are red and blue. They are not complementary colors since they are not directly across. So blue's complementary color would be orange, but since they are kind of like on the opposite sides of the spectrum, and red is to the right a little bit from the orange, it is not as strong as a contrast as the complementary colors, but it still kind of contrasts with the different colors because the blue is a cool tone and the red is a warm tone. And the saturation and intensity of the colors, Jesus has a lot of the bright, pure hues of the colors, whereas the disciples and the apostles around him have more muted colors due to the shadowing of them, due to them being on the kind of like the corners of the painting, whereas Jesus is in the center, basking in all the light of the painting. And the value, the pure hues on Jesus, the bright colors of it, how vivid and brilliant those colors are that emphasizes him. And the one point perspective that is used in this painting has the orthogonal lines, which are a mathematic system that people used back then, that, um, and people still use today, that would place orthogonal lines at right angles in the painting so they converge at a vanishing point. Now in this case, the vanishing point is right on Jesus' head, which brings the viewer's eyes right towards him due to the lines, all of them converging to his face. And the placement of the apostles around Jesus Christ. Now the biblical story that is used in this painting plays a lot in how everyone is arranged and how the unity in the movement is. And the biblical event portrayed can be seen in the Zondervan NIV study Bible on Matthew chapter 26, verse 25. When the evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him, one after the other, Surely not I, Lord, Jesus replied. The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. Now with this one, it shows that people, the apostles and the disciples are very worried and very sad. They're kind of in like a hysteric mode. 
because they know that one of them will betray him and they are like, oh, it can't be me. But one of them in the scene will betray him. And um, Leonardo da Vinci interpreted that um, in the positions of John, Peter, and Judas, which are over to the left, or yeah, to the left of Jesus. And um, Leonardo interpreted that Judas would be reaching for the food since he is ultimately the one that will betray Christ. So he's just like, yeah, I'm not really worried about it. Whereas Peter's questioning John about who could it be. And John is no longer clinging to Jesus. He is more saddened and worried for him. And uh, the cemetery with the disciples around him, there are 12 disciples, so six of them are on to the left side of him, and the other six are to the right of him. So it creates a balance by having Jesus in the center being that median, and having the six off to the side of him to create that balance within the painting. And I enjoy the narrative behind it and the work put into it because you can see how many concepts and how many techniques he used within it. And I personally chose this one because of how much significance it had in my own life being a Christian. And I saw that it was very beautiful and um, not only for the surface value, but also the deeper meaning to it and how much work that Leonardo da Vinci put into this painting. And the true essence of art can be found just below the surface. And the Renaissance period has definitely shown that by Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper. It can greatly show that not only the surface can be beautiful, but also how much work and that would put into it and the narrative behind it is also beautiful. And thank you for your attention.